How's it going, Front Runner family? It's Gum Zambata here. And as we've been doing during the lockdown, speaking to all the people involved in local football, whether it be at a national team level or a um, Premier League level, just t- trying to keep up and keep abreast of the news in the cycle. And of course, to find out about the individual and their particular roles and responsibilities when it comes to someone in a high profile position. Today, we have a special treat for you. Not only is Abafana Abafana winning captain, but he is currently the technical director of the senior team. I have the pleasure of announcing that. Neil Tovey is joining me this morning. Good morning, Neil, and thank you so much for your time. Yeah, good morning, and uh, I'm glad everybody is staying safe. and. Uh, yeah, everybody just said here to the lockdown and be positive. I agree. Couldn't agree with you more. Um, Neil, let's start at the beginning because I've, you know, I've never kind of gone into a or seen an exploratory interview into exactly it is what, what you do. So let's talk about the role of a technical director. Very simply put, what is your role <laughs> and your responsibility? If simple, I don't know if it's, go into that. <laughs> I don't know if it's as simple as that, but basically... Um, the role is to, to run all football matters within the association from a technical aspect. That being, um, obviously, as you put it, national teams, of which I have nine. Um, the coach education programs, uh, which are controlled by CAF, which I'll come back to shortly later in the interview. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, leagues being played around the country, both, both uh, in, in all the provinces uh, and regions and LFAs, um, also uh, women's football, women's development, um, uh, grassroots. So any areas of the game, uh, refereeing is also in my portfolio, although we have a, a referee manager, that ex-referee manager, because that was not my forte, mm-hmm. but I still manage them in the portfolio. Uh, together with medical as well, we have a team doctor, Talani and Gwenya, mm-hmm. he which controls all the medical aspects of the association, but uh, then bring them all together to manage all the, those portfolios. Okay, now you speak about the medical component. We started off kind of telling everybody to, you know, um, look at uh, what the government is saying regarding COVID-19. I'm guessing discussions between you and the team doctor, um, considering the current uh, climate, have been either illuminating or helping in guiding some of the decisions you have to make. Yeah, we obviously get guarded by um, the world aspect about Mm COVID-19, but mainly what's happening back at home uh, because it's actually twofold. It's not as easy as a national association uh, and simply that, okay, once we have it under control in our country, Mm. that it's all very well and good. We can start playing football. Mm. We can't start internationally because obviously our leagues will then have to start participating and playing and the players will then have to start on a program to get match fit again. So it's not just a case that uh, it, it's just simply get going from, from the onset. There'll be mm. a whole lot of different aspects uh, put in, put in obviously into, into measure. Um, and probably international football will only come back in, in maybe early 2021 for that matter. Hmm. Uh, or late 2020 because of the fact, as I said, leagues will have to start be competing. And being playing on the international fold, if we've got to play Ghana and Ghana have not got their their house in order in, in terms of COVID-19, sure. how can you play an international match? So sure. it's not all cut and dry. It'll have to be FIFA will have to come in and, and uh, give an overall picture, CAF. Uh, so there's loads of role players from a national association. Yes, we might be able to, to start our national uh, football leagues and that mm-hmm. and get mm-hmm. playing again. But from an international perspective with national teams, and there's a number of them, as I said, the under-17s were in their qualification, the under-20 girls, under-17 girls, mm-hmm. the under-23s wanted to go to the Olympics, so you have to set up a whole new program for them. But far now we're in the middle of an AFCON qualification. So there's, there's loads of aspects that will need to come into play before international matches will be played again. Okay, fair enough, and that makes sense. Um, Speaking to your role as a technical director, you came in in, in, in 2015. It's, it's been five years now. Looking at your stint, looking at um, where you began, what, what state did you find football in? Uh, and what was kind of the top thing on your to-do list when you came into office? Yeah, there were a couple of aspects that, you know, uh, the association was in its early days of Vision 2020. 
mm -hmm. two. Uh, so the 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 process of that was was fundamental in in getting football played uh, in in leagues uh, around the country. Developing the coaches was one fundamental issue. Yes, we were always pretty high up on that agenda mm -hmm. in terms of our coaching infrastructure in the country. We were leaders uh, in, on, on the continent right. in that regard. But CAF themselves, from a, an open perspective, weren't, weren't uh, as well organized as what they should have been, okay. like, like the UEFA licenses and that, So, which I'll also come to and discuss uh, down the line. So mm -hmm. that was a big area that, uh, you know, us being where we were, we already had done a professional coaching license, two of them to be on a, to be in fact, mm -hmm. where 53 coaches did the professional license, but CAF hadn't even had a professional license. So there was areas of that. So we were very well advanced in the coach education, mm -hmm. but it was still one of, of getting it down to the grassroots, getting it down to the regions for, for all coaches to, to be amply qualified. Right. Uh, that was one area that was that was needed, but the most important was was to get our national teams back on track. Right. Um, we have always had the talent, uh, but qualifying for for tournaments were, was was not really happening in in, in a lot of our age groups, mm -hmm. and 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 more so in our senior national team, uh, Bafana. So they they were missing out on on qualification processes. Uh, along the way so th that was one of the major aspects and yeah and then just gradual picking up uh, on areas where we could do a lot better in our on our in our strength as our organization and and we were a very competent organization i mean i've been in a number of the 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 conferences and yeah. and, and and courses with fifa uh, with regards to technical directors across the continent so we were very much looked at as, as leaders of our program. I mean, we had TDs. Some countries didn't have technical directors in, uh, employed. Some didn't have women, uh, women managers in place. We had all that. So right. we were quite far advanced from those stages, but we just had to uplift all the processes that, that were. So my first aspect, which I kind of identified and wanted to get going with was the was the provincial technical uh, directors, if I can call them. They're called provincial technical officers. Okay. Uh, guys and girls that were, would do the job, uh, qualified guys and, and girls that would go do the job in the provinces so that what I spoke about earlier, what is my role and function, yeah. that they could make sure that it happens down in the provinces. Okay. Okay. Great. So you had the name kind of, you know, disseminating whatever information on the ground. Let's go back to the coaches. Um, because having spoken to David Notwana recently, I'm trying to get the, the current state of play. Do we have enough coaches? Do we have too many coaches, not enough jobs? What's the current situation that we find with our coaching fraternity? Yeah, we have loads of coaches. I just feel that, you know, um, and I'll, I'll, as I said, I will come back to, I just want to start from a national team perspective. What, right. Coming back to your previous question, one of the areas I, notify, I noted was that um, the national teams, um, the technical, uh, what do you call them, technical component to, to the national teams was not fulfilled in how I wanted to see it be fulfilled. So okay. the under 17, I'll just use under 17 age group, for instance, sure. they never had a permanent um, uh, assistant coach, goalkeeper coach. And um, yes, there are various regions, uh, reasons. It gets quite expensive, but I think if you want to develop as an association, because it's important to have your own technical team so that you can go out and scout, mm correctly mm -hmm. work together identify talent watch matches talk the game through uh, from a day-to-day -day basis mm. so it was very very important um, for, for uh, that to be taken cognizance of and I didn't believe that that was was totally there right. in all our age groups yes the senior team had that but um, it wasn't there with all the age groups what we were doing very, very well mm -hmm. on the early days was that the fact that 
our, um, our team coaches worked together. So the under 23 coach was assistant coach of the national team, senior mm -hmm. national team, and under 20 helped the under 23 coach. But I still believed that was not a functional way to do it right. totally. I accepted the process. I didn't want to come in and change too much right. because I, coming to what I was discussing earlier, I still believe that for your total concentration on your Pacific age group, you, you needed a full technical team and not to be taken away to another team to assist right. yes. uh, in the process. Yes. Uh, you could still open up dialogue at meetings constantly, I mm -hmm. felt, mm -hmm. but not to be taken away at times because you needed to still be active within your own Pacific uh, team, the national team. So that was one area where uh, I felt was, um, was needed change. And unfortunately, I couldn't get it right totally. Right. Because of the finances and the resources of, of, of the association. Um, we're not in England. We're not in Italy. We're not in Spain, right. Germany, which they have all those resources available to them. Uh, rich in resources financially. Um, and we weren't like we were many years back in 2010, oh. 2012, where sponsorships from from the various we're in 500 million right. at a time you know yeah. so that's changed over the course of time we, we we're not in that position anymore but coming back to your your question about the coaches mm. on in south africa per yeah. se yeah we have very highly qualified coaches but CAF themselves had never had themselves organized. And I'm okay. saying that they have got themselves organized. That's why, and it's almost three years come June, mm -hmm. where they have put a halt on the courses so that they can get themselves organized uh, from a continental perspective. Because what was happening before, yeah. yes, although South Africa had their coaching courses that they were doing with, mm -hmm. with very good instructors, Instructorship was very, very good. The, the rest of the continent were doing, I would say, just for instance, if we did a, a C license, yeah. they would do it in five days. We would, we would do it in 15 days. There was no consistency across the continent, right. no standards of, of, of level of standards. So CAF needed, and they knew they had to bring that to, to to a common common grounding. That's why they halted all the courses mm -hmm. and they've got themselves really, really well organized now in terms of a CAF coaching convention, right. which all associations have had to sign and be part of. Uh, and that will bring about a online application. So if we want to have a, 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 a C license, yeah. a D and a C license, we used to have our own software D license now they've even gone across to a CAF D license and taken a lot of our content right. uh, and used it within the framework. Um, you need to apply. So, and it's very much better now. The standards are of equivalent of UEFA licenses, Asia, okay. Asia uh, licenses. So that was very, very good because now we're in, in the past coach, African coaches that wanted to go and coach in Europe or coach yeah. in Asia had a real, real problem to, to be accepted mm. because of the licensing structure. Mm. And, 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 that, and that was really not good. So whereas we could have countless UEFA license, uh, coaches coming across into our country right. and they can just be accepted. So this equilibrium needed to be brought about and, and, it, and, it, and it has, but there's a long process and they've standardized it, as I said, and they've made it really, really uh, comparable with, with UEFA standards, if not higher in some of them, huh. to be honest. So, yeah, um, so that's where they are now, but it's taken time. We haven't had licenses, uh, the, the BA licenses, C licenses for almost two to three years now. Mm. We've done some C licenses and D licenses, but the B and A licenses have been put on hold, which are now only starting going to be starting very, very soon. So let's put us back on where we want it to be. 
Right. So when you say they resume very soon, obviously we, we want to see that trickle down effect of their efficacy. When do you think that'll play out? Is that a two, three year um, thing that we have to look out for in terms of this whole system now working in harmony? How, how far off do you think that is? No, we're not far off. It's just a case of getting our databases now standardized because okay. CAF have an online system because as you make applicants, say instance, if you want to make an application for a for a CAF B license in a in in a in a province or a region or in in, in a national office, mm -hmm. we've got to apply online. And that coach needs to be on the system that he's completed the CAF C. Uh, because you can't go and do the CAF B of, un, unless you completed the CAF. So all that needs to be uploaded on the system, mm -hmm. which there was in the past, but CAF themselves needed to upload it and become uh, so that database needed to be captured. And, and we as ourselves, because we used to have the old level one and level two licenses, mm -hmm. the level one being the B license, the CAF equivalent of the B license in terms of hours. Mm -hmm. And the CAF uh, A uh, was a level two in terms of, uh, of, uh, of hours of, of, of um, 200, uh, uh, 240 hours. Okay. Uh, so, but that all needs to have uh, these equivalent systems and uh, equivalence licenses brought about okay. and how are we going to do it and what are we going to um, and how are we going to do it. So that all needs to, to be brought about. Okay. So it's, it's, it is a lengthy process, but I think we're one of the countries, uh, one of the associations that has a low, large number of coaches that we have on our database. Yeah. We need to update it uh, effectively and see which ones are still operational, which ones aren't. Okay, great. Now you say it is a lengthy process. I, I assume anything with your job um, is a lengthy process, considering mm -hmm. that results will never be immediate. Um, you're, you're dealing with an expectant nation who are looking to see the national team's fortunes get turned around rather quickly. But looking at the current trend at, at how Bafana are doing, um, how the under-23s are doing, how Banyana are doing, um, how the junior ladies and uh, uh, men's teams are doing, there, there seems to be progress. Is it enough for you? Yeah. Um, are you happy with the current state of play or do you think, are you behind in terms of your own personal vision and maybe outside of Vision 2022, when you came in and took the job, have you hit the, the, the hallmarks and, and the milestones that you wanted to hit? Yeah, look, I mean, I'm, I'm never happy as a person. <laughs> That's why uh, I'm a, I've always been in the situation I've been. Um, but it, but it has been, and uh, not only through my work, but through the good work of the coaches and that as well. Right. But it has been the most successful period in the history of the association in terms of all the age groups. Right. I'm not talking, obviously, Bafana's win in 1996. Was, <laughs> hasn't, been, uh, hasn't been done since. But right. in terms of all the ages and uh, both boys and girls and men and women, They've never had more a successful period since 2015 to date than ever before. Right. Uh, the under-17 boys have qualified for the World Cup. The under-17 girls qualified for the World Cup. Um, the, under, the only age group is the under-20 women. Mm -hmm. has, but it's been a very, very difficult process of qualifying, given the fact that they've always had Nigeria. The way they've had it qualified in the past, right. Nigeria have always come into that, that side of of being pitted against. So they've never really gone further because Nigeria have a very, very strong under 20 women's team. Right. And for various reasons too, which I won't elaborate on. <laughs> but the under 20 men have back-to-back -back, uh, World Cups behind yeah. them. The under 23 uh, men have back-to-back -back Olympic qualification, the women Olympic qualification and World Cup. Bufana now qualified for the last AFCON and now looking not too bad for, for their qualification process. So given that, yes, what stage do we have to take them to now? When they do qualify for the World Cups, how we, can we take them to the next stages of those competitions? That's, right. That is the, the next draw, the next, the next cycle that we have to take it to. Mm -hmm. um, Bafana, yes, they got out of their group stages, went to the, went to the quarterfinals. So, you know, yeah, we were all disappointed uh, in, in that match uh, against Nigeria, but given that uh, they hadn't got out of the, the group stages for a long time before. So 
right. uh, given our quality and, and standards. So, yes, we, we from a, your coming back to your question, mm. yes, I uh, was very happy with where we are, but never satisfied. Okay, let's, let's, let's simplify that in terms of maybe look at why that is. Why do you think we're enjoying the most um, successful purple patch of um, productivity as our national teams? Um, what would you put that down to? I think it's, there's a couple of factors. Mm-hmm. Um, one, one factor, as I mentioned earlier, is that the synergy between carrying forward the experience of that under-17, in 2015, the under-17 uh, uh, boys team, men's team right. went to the World Cup. We've carried that through to the under-20s. Uh, a lot of those players played in the uh, under-20 World Cup that was in South Korea. Right. And now, uh, and gone through now to the under-23 Olympic team. So that progress, and, and some of them even through to Bafana uh, mm. on some level. So. The synergy there has been has been very very good. So you, to get experience at international level and in comp, com, competitions and FIFA competitions international level, you can't throw away that experience. Right, it's vital. So that's a, that's one aspect where we've done very very good work at. The other aspect is I believe that we have a good synergy in terms of of our, our talent identification processes. Yes, we're missing, missing players. We will always miss players, you know, but, and we can still do a lot better in, 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 in synchronizing that, uh, that process so right. that we don't miss too many players. I think the clubs have also, a lot of the PSL clubs in the past have never had decent enough um, uh, development, youth development programs. Yeah. I mean, only in the last five, four years, Three years as chiefs had uh, had had youngsters. Right. Um, Pirates have always had had uh, had youngsters through Augusto Palacios. Mm-hmm. Uh, have always supplied the majority of players to our national team, so that's they've been effective. Right. Super Sport have really come on board. They've got a really effective junior program. Mm. Um, Vits have always had an effective junior program, so the talent identification there, uh, but. Us, we still need to get to a process where every PSL team, mm. if they do not have an, an effective development program, do not qualify to play in the league. Isn't that where club licensing comes in? Yes, and I was going to touch on that as well. Club licensing is some area where we need to grab hold of very, very urgently, and that's one of the next cycle uh, cycles that, that, that need to be put into place. Right. One, from the standards of the, the clubs. Two, to that standard of the coaches. Mm. So, for instance, uh, the coaches of the PSL team, they have to have a CAF A or, or professional license. Okay. Otherwise, they're not allowed to coach uh, in, in the PSL. Right. And then, obviously, you'll filter it down to the NFD uh, to the uh, Matsepe, to the yeah, ABC, or, not the right. SAB league anymore, and down through the process, and then even a coach in the under 15 A level at a Randberg, for instance, an amateur sure. team, Randberg, sure. whatever, yeah. he must have a minimum of a C license, which equates to a youth between the ages of 13 to 16, 17, uh, and youth coaching. So. If he's an under 15A coach, mm. he must have the equivalent of a CAF C license. Makes and sense. obviously, uh, that can be filtered down uh, through the relevant team. So that's one area we really have to grasp upon yeah. uh, and, 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 and bring into being. It seems like there's been, looking from the outside, it seems like there's a slight resistance to club licensing. Anyone yeah. who plays football seems to know that it's the, for the benefit of football, yet we're, we seem so far away from it. Well, we're not that far because CAF have already put a little bit of an implement, implementation process. Mm-hmm. You know, the likes of Sundowns, Vits, uh, Pirates, and who all that qualified for the continental competitions. Right. They were not allowed to have coaches on the bench that do not have a CAF A license or okay. equivalence. Right. Okay. So, so that functionality coming from CAF will have to be taken up uh, by the national associations. Mm. So that's going to be very important. So 
we we were in the process of I was setting up a meeting with the PSL and Mato with regards to various issues, and one of them was a club licensing issue. Right. Uh, how are we going to go about it to to structure it better? Uh, because it can't be just done overnight. You've got to understand you have to be done in a process mm. uh, to allow whatever PSL coaches that do not have that agreement for them to go through the licensing process. As long as they're in that process, then maybe they can be. And, and it's an understanding of the club bosses. You just can't hire whoever you want to hire. Right, know? yeah. And also, all overseas coaches that come in need to be able to produce a license and be accepted by the National Association before they even get registered as a coach within the PSL. There we go. I guess, simply put, club licensing just keeps everybody honest um, in the greater picture. Let's look at Vision 2022. Um, are we on track? Um, it's, it's, it, the cycle is almost over. Um, what's there yeah. still left to do in terms of, you well, know, that's making what I'm sure saying the next, the next cycle... Uh, needs to now say, okay, vision, we can't come to 2022 and then start saying, okay, well, when's the next vision? Right. We've got to now say, okay, tick the boxes where we, we've got right mm -hmm. uh, and then add, add to those boxes that we've got right and then also create, like you say, club licensing, all that other areas which we need to get hold of in the next part of the vision mm. um, and, and then take it forward from there. So we need to create... Uh, vision 2030 30, uh, and, 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 and working in a cycle of eight years because the World Cups are in cycles of four, which is equivalent right. to eight. So we need to start working, I think, on vision 2030. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and that needs everybody's incorporation into that from refereeing, from, from all aspects, how we can right. improve all the standards uh, all around. Okay. Um, and then in terms of, um, you know, cu the current state of play, COVID-19 slowed, slowed things down. <coughs> Coach Notwane yesterday kind of said, listen, I don't mind the year because I hardly see my players and, um, you know, give me time to kind of do my due diligence, look for more players, grow the base ahead of the Olympics. I'm guessing as a national federation, COVID, the break for COVID does afford more time to, you know, kind of take a fine tooth comb in the approach to the big tournaments. Yes, at a league level, it's quite, um, it, it stymies progress. But from a national team level, surely the, the, the extra time affords you an opportunity to grow and build? Yeah, for, for David, it'll work well, right. you know, because it's next year, uh, July, August. Yeah. Uh, so he will have his time to, as he says, to scout better, which we had already put a, a scouting process in place for him to go overseas and to see a lot more players. Yeah. Uh, with with the various other uh, people that we're going to attach with them, scouting personnel that we want to attach with them, uh, and go and discuss with the clubs and and not only scout the players but discuss. Oh, I, I see this is a player at your club. Mm. Kindly know that we want to use them for the Olympics. So this is the program going forward. And engage with them, you know, so that they feel part of the process, mm -hmm. which is very, very important because, you know, this club versus country is, a, is, a, is not just localized to South Africa. It's, right. it's, it's, uh, it's an international aspect, which will become very, very difficult for us. So we have to engage with, with once he's done a scouting process, he most probably will then have to go back and say, okay, re go back to those clubs which he's found the players in yeah. and then sit down with his with his program going forward and say this is the program going forward let's let's uh, let's work together because it's an in interest of the both cl the club yeah. and and the association because the olympics many a player that's played in the olympics for that matter has gone on to better things and and been scouted by i mean there's scouts galore there at mm -hmm. the olympics mm -hmm. So that'll give them the opportunity to put their, their players on the, in the window. How do you well. balance that? Because that's a keen observation that you make, but it kind of latches onto the point that clubs will tend to then be supportive once that, secure, that uh, qualification is in the bag, once they know that, listen, the world stage is watching. How do you balance that, that the need for, we need your players to qualify for these events as opposed to don't just give us your best when we've already qualified? 
Yeah, there is a balance. You know, it's as I said, it needs an understanding by everyone. Mm. Uh, discussions, uh, talking to the coaches of the respective teams, and not just the the club officials. Mm. Um, it's also that, um, you know, fortunately the under twenty threes has now come there. Their program has now come jointly with FIFA uh, weeks, where they are compelled to release players. So right. that's been a big plus factor for 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 the the Olympic before before that was never in the same cycle and to, so the release of players was was so so hard to get mm. and it still is hard because mm. you want to try to prepare a program uh, but but your whole team is not not possibly always there you know yeah. for so we've had to discuss and draw up a program with David and 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 devise a way where we can say okay Let's try, and, and that was one of the areas we were, we were going to discuss with the PSL with Matu, the league fixtures, yeah. so that, 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 that would fall in line and, and help us in that regard, and we could help them and tell them our dates and all that. So there's a whole thought process. It's not just a simple, and, and let's get the buy-in of everybody, because after all, it's for the benefit of, of, of football largely as a whole. Okay, okay. And then on this point of, of tracking players and their development, I mean, have you been keeping almost an Excel spreadsheet, as it were, of um, the progression of players? Because, you know, we always speak about how players can go missing once they're in the system. We've, we've spoken about missing out on players that are out there, but sometimes you'll have someone who's prominent at under 20 level and then come senior level, we don't hear of them anymore. How is that coming along in terms of keeping tabs and making sure there's a consistent flow up the ranks yeah we are we 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 have a process in place where we know exactly every week uh where which players from from an under 17 level are playing all over the world mm -hmm. uh, appearances come on as a substitute whatever we have all that info that comes on on a daily basis mm -hmm. and we have even got it now for for women because as you know the women are also embarking their, their, their talents all over the world. Yeah. So we even have the women now being tra tracked and traced. But we still, as I said, part of the big process going forward for Vision 2030 mm. will be having persons overseas, not just get info, but having a person localized in, in overseas where we can, I'll just use for instance, a guy like, Lucas Khadebi, for instance, mm -hmm. who's played overseas uh, mm -hmm. and and has the, uh, the you know the co if you walked into a club and the coaches would know him and uh, and uh, he has a stature that they, they that he would be able to go in and 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 say I'll just come and find out how's this player doing yeah uh, you know and we embark and 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 having support that to Malefi to David, mm. even when they go over, that's what we're trying to incorporate. Ex-professionals that have played overseas, work together with uh, the national team coaches, and we could leave them there for two to three weeks, or try to look at a person that we could identify there to give us the, the go and watch this player be, mm. being played in, uh, in Holland. Yeah. Uh, you know, and go and see how he does this weekend and have somebody there that we can trust to give us the information. You raise a good point regarding former players, um, legends as it were. Are there enough of them for your liking in our local football? Um, where did we drop the ball with that? Because if you look around the world globally, you know, there seems to be quite a lot of football people for football solutions. Um, do you think we have enough of that locally? We do. Mm. Um, I mean, you just have to look at David Nyati, for instance. Sure. Was David Nyati? He's played in. He's played in, in Europe, and uh, he's just one one example. Um, Mark Fish. Yeah. Another. You know. So those kind of players that have played uh, abroad. Yeah. Although you don't only need a, a player that's played abroad. Uh, Aaron McQuenna. You know those type of people. They they there. They there. Are they involved enough, though, for your liking? Are they involved? They're enough? not at the moment. Right. They're not at the moment. And that's yeah. what we want to try and change. Got it. And it doesn't have to be an ex Bafana player. Mm. You know, it can be somebody that we know that's got a real good R for, for scouting. Mm -hmm. 
that is knowledgeable about the game, knowledgeable about that age group. Right. You know, because it's one thing watching an under 17 and saying, oh, okay, what standards do we expect at that level? Mm. So it's not just a cut and dry. Uh, so we've got, to, we've got to choose those people very, very sensibly. Mm-hmm. But also they need to be paid. That's true. You know, uh, and once again, it boils down to finances. So how are we going to hit that happy medium yeah. to do what we all know? We've, I've got my four-year plans in place. Right, right. <laughs> We've all got it in the four-year plans. It's yeah. there. Yeah. But implementation of the four-year plans is key, mm-hmm. given the fact that do we have the financial resources? So we in that, that's, that's one area that we really need to, to, um, to get better yeah. and, and try to get business to come on board with us in some way to say, come on board with our scouting network. Yeah. And these guys can go and where, where, and do adverts for them, whatever, you right. know, so we got to get really creative in our thought processes there. Okay. Now that makes sense. Now, do you ever have any of the current Mafana players or, you know, of recent times come to you and say, guys, you set the bar so high in 1996 with that AFCON win. Uh, and now to try and get back to that, you know, if we're having a look at a 360 uh, degree pie in terms of how close to being full circle we are, where do you think we are in that process? Because to get back to 96 seems a long way off, but to think that we have so much talent in the Karen Bafana and even the under 23s, it can't be that far off. So to balance and to manage the expectations, how far do you think we are from coming full circle back to 96 achievements wise? Look, like you say, we have immense talent. Mm. Uh, from a talent perspective, I don't think we, we far off it. But as we know, talent doesn't only bring results. Yeah. The mentality factor is huge. Mm-hmm. You know, to win a continental competition of that magnitude, you have to be really, really mentally attuned. Uh, and it's not when you're doing well, not when you're winning. Mm. When you're winning, it's easy to mentally tune in. Sure. Um, it's, it's when things go against you. Uh, uh, that class of 96 was, was really, really strong mentally so that we could get out of that we could call it a slump or a downside in the yeah. game or whatever. Yeah. We could get out of it very quickly to change the game again. And that's the key. Yeah. How long you, 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 you stand in that, you know, that if you period wallow, of, you know what I mean? You, of, you yellow in it and, and worry yeah. about it. And sure. so we were fortunate to have a lot of people mentally strong in that age group uh, in that, in that time mm. that, that, could do something great and different and at a drop of a hat right. and suddenly it's turned again, you know, and that's what we need to get about from a plain perspective with these players, uh, identify the situations mm-hmm. in the match leadership. I don't think there's enough. There's some good leaders in the mm-hmm. team. Mm-hmm. I don't think they express themselves enough. I don't think they're strong enough in terms of getting on the backs of players and telling them, Hey, you know, get hard on players during the match sometimes right. and say, you're not doing the job. You're not right. doing it now. Lift yourself up and, and being able to discuss it and talk that at a given moment in the match, but not just rely, rely on the coach to come in at half time and say, oh, you're doing this wrong, that wrong. Right. Right. You know, that's, that was one of the, also our strengths of the 96 team is each individual player could identify that moment in the game. Well, I'm not really doing my job properly. Mm. Mm. I don't think they look at themselves criti- critically enough. Right. And uh, accountability is not there. Yeah. And I can see it in the PSL. I can see it in the PSL level. Hmm. There's, there's a few of them that are really um, pick up that, that mentality factor. I think Kakana yeah. is, very, is one. Right. I, I really think Kakana is very good in that. He's never satisfied as his performance. You can see the body language. You can pick yes. it up on the outside, the body language. Yeah. I think too many of them think you know, that they, they, they've done it before they've done it. Yeah. To be honest. And, and, and I'm not being derogatory at that. It, no, it's it, it's a do. mental approach. It comes from like a mental capacity, and which yeah. is not easy. It's, it's, it's not a Bafana thing. It's not a football thing. It's a society thing. 
I was about to say, you know, it sounds like there, there needs to be a psychological revolution as far as the players are concerned. But how, how do you facilitate that? How do you, you know, in partnership with the league, in partnership with people who are, you know, well-versed in helping players hardwire themselves for success? I, I'm guessing it's, it, it's a collective communal approach, as you say, because it's not just a Bafana thing, not just a league thing, societal. It's, it is society. Uh, it needs, you know, I've always said, I believe every youngster coming out of school should mm. attend one year in the Defence Force. Mm. I really do. Hmm. I for really discipline do. reasons. Not for discipline reasons, for hardship reasons, for service. And you don't have to go to the border to go and shoot somebody <laughs> or anything. I'm not talking about things like that. Right. Go and do your basic uh, military um programs yeah yeah um go into and within that time once you've done the basics then you can go and help uh, the the uh, in townships right. or roadblocks right or medical services or, sure. or or you know go and help in that regard and i've become they'll become much more disciplined and 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 in and and, and and want to give more back to society once they've completed that year yeah. Uh, in in that program, uh, look, a lot of people might get shot gun, shot down by a lot of people, but um, I believe I believe that should should be brought about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, our, our our young generation of today, to say they have it easier, uh, I believe so. Mm -hmm. You know. Yes, it's, there are still difficult times. We know yes, that everybody yes. has difficult times. But I think now, they, even at school, the discipline at school is not there. Right. You know, and, and it, it's just open for, for chaos some of the times. And, you know, and you can see it in, in the society when you have protests. Mm. Yes, mm. go and protest. But don't burn out. But don't, burn make, out it a, don't, yeah. make, it, don't make it a violent protest. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and you can see it then, you see it from that regard, you know, and that's something that we have to grasp. Okay, no, fair enough, fair enough. And then in terms of your remits, I mean, you've spoken very candidly about Vision 2030 and looking to the future. It sounds like you're still up for the job in terms of the scope of um, <laughs> your, your job and, and what you look to do. Are you looking to grow it? Are you trying to bring more things under your wing or do you feel that you have enough on your plate and just need to get this kind of done to your best level? Look, you, your timing of the interview is quite apt in the mm. sense that my contract finishes in June. Okay. Um, which I really haven't discussed, you know, at this moment in time, mm. where I want to go. I have have I have businesses back home in Durban, which, mm -hmm. which I have to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, but given the fact that you know, I have to, there's lots of things, areas that I have to look at with regards to what I want to, where I want to go in my life. But, right. but always, uh, um, if you ever ask me now, I'm very, very happy of where, where I am and, and, and what I've established uh, within the association. And I'm very thankful to the association for, for giving me the opportunity uh, to, to, explore different area of, of my of my football circle yeah you know playing yeah. and then coaching and and then going into a, a technical directorship mm. so i've got to be ever thankful for that to to the president uh mr judan for mm. for dr judan for for that uh where i am i don't quite know i've i've got a lot of my areas where i have to give it some thought right but Having said that, I don't, I'm only, um, whichever way it went, I'm still yeah. there to, to assist and to support. And I guess June could be pushed out considering most contracts in the footballing world and in, yeah, the world look, in general uh, pushed out. It's open for discussions and where we, you know, like it is, you know, so, mm -hmm. so we, we'll just have to wait and see, you know, okay. so have to wait and see in that regard. Okay, Mr. Toby, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time, Neil. Uh, it's been illuminating speaking to you and kind of getting a status update of the current state of play as to a national level and obviously how you've then kind of used your position to help grow and stabilize things. So I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Kamsa. Thanks. thanks.
Have a great day further.